Hello, what's going on YouTube? This is your boy Jmon here, and I'm bringing you guys a deck profile that a lot of you guys requested on my last video. Now, the past month I played this deck, I've went undefeated four times, and by undefeated I mean completely never lost a single match. Yes, I'll make it to tops, but I just wouldn't lose tops either. I would just go all the way to first place. Um, I played this deck five times in the past month. Um, didn't make it into tops on one of them, which is weird. I actually ended up losing two matches. And it was never because of Brixis, it's because my opponents were actually really good players, but I was playing other decks this month, but this deck right here, um, the ratios I got and everything are, they're on par, you know, I, you know, I have, when it comes to like theories and all that good stuff, it's different from other uh, World Chalice players, and I think that's where I defer, and I think that's where I get the advantage because of most people, you know, and they're very small experience going against um, World Chalice players by ordinary means, and I'm just not that way. But anyway, so I went undefeated two days in a row, uh, yesterday and, or yeah, and the day before. Now, what did I get? Well, when I went and entered, I ended up getting a skull deed out of my two packs that I actually got when I entered, which was awesome. Um, then I went completely undefeated and played against a lot of really good decks. I played against an interesting one in the finals, and it was also uh, the same guy in the last round of Swiss, but I ended up uh, getting two boxes of Extreme Forces uh, from getting first place, which is awesome. Um, if you guys ever want me to do, like, box openings or whatever in the future, let me know. But this tournament, uh, whoever got first place also got this card right here. It also got Borload. And not only did I get Borlo and two boxes of the Extreme Force, but I got five packs of Circuit Break and pulled this evenly matched over here. And so, this is all in all a great tournament. But anyway, this deck right here, if you, if you don't put the time and effort into this deck, ratios and everything, and actually preparing for grind games, you, it, you know, the deck will let you down. However... It's it's quite different if you expect to go into the grind game, if you expect to get disrupted 100% of the time, if you go in with the mentality to get disrupted, you will do great. But anyway, enough of that. Um, I want to go ahead and get the deck profile out of the way really quickly because I want to do combos as well. I want to show you guys a couple combos that I ended up pulling off in the tournament, especially in the grind game. So we're going to start with these. This is now the new best card in the deck. I'm telling you guys right now, if this card right here, if this resolves, you win the duel. Period. Plain and simple. And a lot of other players that don't play this deck know that. And, you know, getting around it, you know, getting around all the disruptions, continuously bringing it back is key. Now this Shine Bola right here is secretly the most important card of the deck because, again, Venus can get disrupted all you want, but... If they reincarnation one of these cards, or somebody decides to side chain disappearance, and on your first shine ball you banish the rest, you lose, essentially. Uh, this right here, the former best card in the deck, until we got Skuldy, plain and simple. Skuldy, Venus being a one card, Skuldy is nuts. It's insane, and everything. There's no not much to say, and also you know utilizing its grave effect is actually. You know, you you need to think about his grave effect a lot more when it comes to the grind game, and you don't want to burn through him all that much. Lee's, um, I've I've done a lot more interesting plays with Lee's these past uh, this past month. A lot of it involves sacking off World Chalice extra deck monsters to add herself back, so I can special it, so I don't eat up a normal summon, um, so I can save it for things like Legacy and such. And that's what uh, really puts me in the driver's seat. As long as I can keep re recurring cards without committing the normal summon, it's great. This card right here, the past two days, Guard Dragon has really have kicked my opponent, a lot of my opponent's asses. Not only because of some extra deck choices, but because of the fact that I've used this hand trap effect a lot more. If I wasn't smart enough to keep at least one in hand the majority of my games, I probably would be losing more matches. Case in point, against the guy in the finals, he was playing some 60 card plant spiral deck, which is really, really good, and he went 
all undefeated all the way until he got to me uh, in the last round of Swiss. And then he won all of his tops and got to me in the finals, and I still beat him. Because this card right here, this card also shut down a time pendulum graph, which I will get down to uh, later. Uh, three of these, um, I'm debating on cutting this down to two and having one beckon for a nappies combo, simply for the fact that I need to start preparing for the True Draco matchup. Even though I have some inherent outs to it, True Draco's is still an issue. Um, so I'll have to see what I have to work with in terms of side deck and all that good stuff. Two of these, I know the the uh, YCS Pokemon winner won uh, without using these, but again, the grind game. The grind game is, when you're going against really competitive players, expect yourself to get disrupted not only multiple times, but expect yourself to uh, play into the grind game. And so you're going to need that hard reset if you're going to end up grinding, because I played a lot of grind games uh, in these past few tournaments. Um, one Lazuli, you need it. Um, need to get that DT, I just found out. Um, uh, one Gamma Seal. Um, it's obviously a win condition, but alongside those, I also play one Raiden and one um, Thunder King. The reason why I don't play Dogran is because this right here has actually won me a few games. Simply for the fact that it puts another 28 body on the board, and it, if you're not going first, this right here, this right here has won me two games yesterday. Simply for the fact that the token spawn just put that extra damage I needed on the board. And it's also a starter because it gives you a token, so if you need to go into that link spider, it's there. The option's available. And the last monster in the deck, the win more card that people don't play, is this. It's good going first, obviously, but going second, it's also good. Similarly for the fact that when you're playing throughout your combo, you're likely going to have access to Venus and Lee already. So when you get, you when you draw into Brilliant Fusion or when you draw into um, Foolish Burial or any of that good stuff, what else are you going to send? Oh, I know, this card. I'm breaking your board, whatever you're making, it's gonna get broken, and then this will hit the board um, as a last uh, piece of resistance to absolutely make sure, even if I don't kill you, if I'm going second and break the board and drop this on the board, you're not coming back. I'm making sure that you will not come back and I will secure the win. See, now, a lot of people argue that, you know, things like Gamma Seal and all that is should be enough. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes your opponents are really, really smart, and sometimes your opponent just has all the outs, but Christia just seals the deal. You know, it makes sure that you win. It's like a guaranteed. Now, Brilliant Fusions, I don't know what I'll do without it. I really hope on the next ban list, if, if they decide to address Gym Knight FDK, that they don't hit Brilliant Fusion. Because if not, I don't know what... Uh, this deck would do without Brilliant Fusion. It's a really good extender. I've actually thrown it at people and just just to check for potential Ash Blossoms so the rest of the cards in my hand are good. Uh, two Trends mods. Again, the YCS Book winner was playing three, but two is a good number simply for the fact that um, I'm playing a good enough ratio. There's so many... You have so many ways to access Venus if you don't already draw into it. Three... If you bump this up to three, there will be quite a few times where you will open multiples, or open one and draw into a second one, and all that stuff, and it's it's not good at three. You, you'll you see it too much. Uh, two Waterfront, it's staple. Um, plain and simple, it's actually really good if you're playing multiple Kaijus, which I'm doing. Uh, Kaiju Slumber, that's one thing that I don't think the Boku winner played. I play it because it's a, not only it's a board wipe, but it also searches you a kaiju next turn. It's good for the grind game. Foolish Burial, it's it's foolish. Um, War Legacy's Heart, this has actually won me two games. Um, especially in the grind game. In the grind game against Pendulums, in that combo I'll show you a little bit later. Um, this card has helped me. And it, if it weren't for that, I wouldn't have won. Uh, Emergency Teleport, it's, it's e telly. It's good. Um, unexpected die because it. I only play one because I don't want two. 
simply for the fact that if I draw, if I open it, it's good. But I don't want to end up opening a die and then drawing into a die with a skull dread. It could be easily be another good card that I could use. Instead of just drawing an unexpected die when I could have drawn something else that's good and just be forced to put the die back. Uh, one Monster Reborn, because it's Monster Reborn. Soul Charge, because it's Soul Charge. I actually sided out a lot going second because when I'm going second, I'm looking to OTK you. I'm going to OTK the shit out of you and there's nothing you can do about it. Nice tech cards right here. Two My Bodies. Is I was playing three, but I cut it for one additional card and it's actually helped uh, a lot more. Now, the theory behind my body as a shield is simple. Anything, everything is negating and destroying. I want to immediately destroy those. I want to immediately, I don't want to auto lose to ultimate conductor Tyranno because if your stuff, if all your stuff gets booked down, you lose. And since conductor himself is a legal target, this is live. It stops ciphering gear gamma, which is the reason why I got this early. When this special edition hits, there's going to be a lot more Cyphering Gear Gammas floating around. There's not a lot of people playing them now because there's not a very big supply of them. And those that have Gammas aren't getting rid of Gammas. And I guarantee you, I guarantee the moment the special edition hits, there will be a lot of Cyphering Gear Gammas floating around. And I know a lot of people will say that, oh, because Designator is coming out, it can, um... It can, uh, Designator will deal with those things, but the thing is, Gamma is the only hand trap that bypasses Designator, therefore it's still usable, and not to mention, it puts two bodies on the board. So even if you're not making Omega, let's say I'm playing this deck right here, and I throw a Brilliant Fusion at you, and you Ash, and I play Gamma, it's just, I just, I just got myself two free monsters without committing my normal summon. And so, it's, this is amazing. It stops Gamma, it stops Trapping Me Masterpieces, which is 9 times out of 10. It stops Vortex Dragon, it stops Diagram, it stops Conductor Tyranno, it stops Gamma, it stops Ogre. And against Trick Stars, they're starting to either, there's like two Trick Stars. One is either playing Max, or maxing out on Torrential Tribute, or one is maxing out on Bottomless Trapple. And you don't want your Venus to get blown up by a Bottomless, and you don't want to sit there and play out your turn and have a full field of monsters and smack into a torrential because you don't you don't want to auto lose who wants to auto lose this card right here is coming way too hot for me these past few days and the other one forbidden chalice this was my third my body but as i was playing these couple of tournaments i realized very quickly that i did not i do not like being on the receiving end of an abyss dweller because a lot of Pendulum players are playing it now, and Abyss Dweller actually hurts this deck a little bit. But I don't want to just be on the receiving end of a Dweller, and I don't want to be on the receiving end of a Calamities or whatnot. So, I mean, this card has also shut down Buster Dragon a few times, and so it, it offers some value. So I'm trying to, I'm fiddling with the ratios between my body and Forbidden Chalice, simply for the fact that Dweller hurts, but I don't feel like... You know, smacking into set cards that just completely wreck me, or smacking into hand traps that I'm quote unquote not prepared for, which I'm definitely prepared for. Um, and the trap card one fan match of Shade Brigade because it's another starter, it's another name, so it makes Skoldy um, more live, especially if you want to keep Venus on board just in case you draw into Exodius. It gives you that option. Now for the extra deck, we're going to play once Ravenite. It's it's not the bread and butter of the deck, but it's your best extra deck extender. Now your real bread and butter of the deck are these guys. Your three doggies, your three M-Ducks. Um, it, it's good. I've Against the uh, the weird 60 card plant spiral-ish deck, um, he was main decking cherries. He cherries me three times out of the matches we played. He has cherried my Ningirsu, he has cherried my Ib, he has cherried my, um, my Ib, my Ningirsu, and my Skulldeed. He's cherried all that, but he didn't have Imduck. See, if you cherry's Imduck, I ain't going nowhere. If you can't start your engines, you can't get to your destination. That's the logic behind that. Um, Link Spider, because it's Link Spider, 
Um, I've actually did a triple calling tri-gate with Link Spider one time. I never thought I'd have to do it, but again, the grind game. And one Link Karibo. This card right here offers you way too much value. This card right here will sit here and offer you two monsters because guard, you sack off Guard Dragon for this, and then you banish Guard Dragon for another monster. So, this right here is solid. I love this card. Um, it has helped on Brick Hands because, again, it adds two monsters for a Skulldeet. Not only that, but it also offers... Um, it offers you Nengushu plays to go off much easier, simply for the fact that you would end up having to use more cards out of your hand to do so. One Binary Sorceress. Um, I just use it for a bridge. I've never used any of its effects at all. One Underclock Taker again. I don't know why more World Chess players are not playing this card. Because you're not going to always win the dice roll. And if I go second, I want to just go for a game. And this card right here is an excellent way to do so. If you are going through your combos and you have a skull dread up top and you already went into your firewall and stuff, you haven't went into your trigate yet, but you need to go into link two to bridge so you can special off firewall to go into trigate, this card is the best card to go into because any monster that you drop will almost guarantee go down to zero because firewall is at 2800 because of skull dread. Link this and the other monster, make trigate. That single co-link trigate effect that does double damage kills opponents. You drop something to zero and you do 5,600 damage in one blow. Like doing the rest of the 2,400 damage if they haven't already, you know, paid life points with some other effect. You, it's so easy. You, you just win. I don't know why people do not play underclock. It is so good. I want every time we resolved it. Um, two ibs. Um, you need one for Ningirsu combo if you if you don't have the Skull Dread, and you need one to end your board with Trigate. And it's a name, which is always good if I need to sack something off to add Lee back so I can special, so I can um, get a combo started again. Orum, I've used this almost every single time because I knew Venus was going to get disrupted in some way, form, or fashion, whether it be Effect Veiler, Ghost Ogre, whatever. As long as you can keep Venus on the board, you will win, and Orm is the way to do so. I've actually attempted to revive a Gamma Seal, but my opponent also had Ogre, which is the 60 card plant spiral kind of guy, which was weird, but still got him. Ningirsu never, never lets me down. He draws cards and he scrap dragons cards away. What more can he ask for? Uh, Trigate Wizard. Um, I generally only use him for the double damage if I'm going second. I I I think I've only used his effect to banish cards like twice or three times yesterday. And I've used his negate effect once. That goes to show just how quickly games end if I lose the die roll. And if I go first and I make the board with Trigate, people just immediately scoop and go to game two without even playing a single card. Firewall the best combo extender to end off your uh, unbeatable ass board. Skulldeet, best extra deck monster of all time. He fixes your hands, he special summons a monster, he has he opens three spots, it's good. All right, now for the side deck, we're, go we're playing going first cards, we're gonna play anti-spells and different dimension grounds. Different dimension ground is so good, why do people not side this card? You side this against pendulums, they don't play the game because they're not gonna wanna pop their scales and all that stuff and get more monsters and try to quote unquote fuel the extra deck if everything is getting banished. It is a one turn macro cosmos. It literally ends my opponent's turns. It is so good. Now for going second cards, we're playing um, two drone locks. They were in the main at one point, but you know, I find the other cards that provide a lot more value. Um, two from Ridden Chalice. Now this card, if I'm re on the receiving end of like dinosaurs or pendulums that like to make a Bistweller and all that good stuff, and if I need to offer extra disruption for like things like um, Vortex and whatnot, then uh, it, then it's there. Uh, three my controls because I mean that card should never have gotten a three because it's it's stupid. Every time I resolve my control. I win the game, essentially. 
Not 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 simply because I take a monster, but because it just baits and negate. Um, evenly matched, obviously. It wasn't the main deck at one point. It might make its way back in when the pendulum phase goes. And the last card, Genzo. I've actually cited this in twice. Because you need to always have, no matter what format you're in, always have each side against some sort of back row heavy deck. Period. Now, on to some combos. Okay, so, what happened um, uh, against the last round of Swiss, I played against a Pendulum player, right? And so, I had, I didn't, with this on the board, I had one other monster, I had Ningirsu and I had this. But I didn't link into this, or link off with this because I was under an Abyss Dweller. I used Ningirsu, I crashed into Abyss Dweller. Um, and he goes, and he makes uh, a couple of more monsters. He makes his first Electromite, because I took his other... Now, he, that was the second Electromite, because I took it with my control. And all that good stuff. He makes another Electromite, and he Pendulum Summons a couple times. He makes a Starving Venom, and he copies. And, um, he swings. He swings. This, this is, I'm getting killed. Now, granted, this is when I some played, or somewhat played, um, I played a few cards, uh, to get through cards, uh, through the deck, because I did not open Venus at all, and I was under Dweller. Because I thought I was going to lose, this is game three. I only bricked one time these past two days. And he, and he just so happened to be the one that bricks me, uh, game one. But... Legacy's killed, and I have like a chosen or whatnot in grave. And I use Legacy um, after he kills, and I summon Lee, and I summon Guard Dragon, and I use Lee, and I immediately search another Legacy, simply for the fact that I knew that I was going to need it. Now, here's where the good part ends. He sets Time Pendulum Graph, and I knew for a fact he had it. I knew for a fact he had it. I draw. He flips it over and he waits. And so, at this point, when I drew for turn, though, I drew into Venus. See, here's the thing. When you don't open Venus, you want to just go through so many cards through your deck, whether it be through Lead, Guard Dragon, Skull Deep, and Gear. So you want to go through all these cards so that either drawing into Venus or drawing into a way to access Venus is infinitely higher the next turn. So... Here's some clutch plays. Here's what I ended up doing. I ended up linking this off immediately. And I go straight into Link Karibo. And he lets it go. You know, it's fine. And I immediately go ahead and banish this said legacy over here. And I go ahead and I add myself a World Legacy's heart. Because I know what I'm doing. And I go ahead and I activate it. And I go ahead and grab these two. And I go ahead and summon Venus right under the arrow. And he goes for the effect of um, Time Graph. And I'm like, alright. We're going to go ahead and Guard Dragon. We're going to kill your Time Graph. Negate. Destroy. And this is when I had like two cards in hand. One being a Legacy and one being like a Guard... Uh, the Venus I drew into. So I activated the effect of Paid 5. And he drops Ghost Ogre. And I'm like, alright, that's cool. That's cool. So Shine Ball gets special. No big deal. I'll just link it off. I'll just make it M Duck, and I'm like, okay. Effect. Tribute. Normal. Response. Link away. Make Orum. Legacy effect. Summon two. Activate Orum effect. Sack off um, whatever I summoned. Summon Venus. Resolve the effect. He immediately scooped it up when I brought it back. Immediately. Scooped that shit up. No. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I don't think anybody could have scooped any faster. And he was just tired. He was just like, man, you always draw really good this, this, and this. I'm like, no, I just know what I'm doing. See, if you prepare for the grind game, if you prepare for a long haul, if you're prepared for things like Abyss Dweller and all that good stuff, this deck right here, easy. Easy win. Well, it's not easy wins. No, against pendulums, you will struggle. But you have to read your opponent. You have to read two turns, two, three turns ahead and end up um, sealing the deal. You need to know exactly what you're doing when you're making plays. 
and you need to know exactly what you're trying to go for on the next two turns. And that is uh, something that uh, I did pretty um, pretty good and pretty well. Um, and I played against a lot of good players. There's an ABC player here now. This guy right here, I don't know if any of you know his name. It's like Zhang Zhao. I don't know. Some Asian guy. But this guy right here, he's the one who got third place at YCS um, Dallas with ABCs and full power spirals when Quick Fix and Drone were still at three. And I 2 0 him. I 2 0 him around four, I believe. And then round five, I go against the um, that 60 card spiral player, whatever. He went f he went first and got me game one. But uh, game two and three, done. Over. Um... He asked me, which is the right card to Cherry? I'm like, well, let me let you in on a secret. If it's not M-Duck, it's probably the wrong card. Because even if you Cherry's Ib, the fact that this deck runs a lot of Link 2s, you run more than just Ibs as Link 2s. Granted, Link 2s are your most important uh, Links because they're your bridges. However, again, with M-Ducks, if you can't start your engines, you're probably not going to get to your destination. But anyway, that's it for this deck profile. Um, in terms of the side deck, I need to prepare for true Dracos. And in order to do that, um, the painful truth is, you can make your, you can make the most unbeatable board with this deck, but if your opponent just drops into Mono Iwato, it's over. Similarly for the fact that nothing in the deck can stop a normal summon, and it'll just literally single-handedly turn off your entire board. So... I need to make space for not only two Master Restricts, but I need to make space for a Solemn Judgment and a Solemn Warning. So not only can I stop in a Mono Iwato, but to stop a Masterpiece as well. There's so many just cool things that I've just done today. There's so many interesting play thing ways I went about things. Simply for the fact that if you know how to play around all these disruptions, if you constantly expect disruptions from your opponent, then you're going to be in a good spot. Because my Venus has been Baylored so many times yesterday, but since I was prepared for people playing Effect Valor, it was okay. Half the time, every time my Venus got hit by Valor, I either already started with a Shade Brigade or an Unexpected Die, or I lead off with Brilliant Fusion, so I can um, sack for Legacy and go into Orm and bring it back and just start resolving again. It's things like that. If you're... If you go about things in a way, if you build your deck in a way to play around multiple disruptions, which everybody should build their deck to do so anyway, but if you do that, you keep guard dragons in your hand for all those targeting effects, because I went against Metal Foes again, and with that Alkahist, him going into that Alkahist, he thought he was being slick by trying to target my Venus, and I guard dragon the shit out of it, and um, it was over. It was over quicker than you can say hi. So... Let me know what you guys think about this deck profile. Um, first, um, to answer the question, uh, how many cards am I playing? I'm playing 42 cards in the main deck. I feel like 42 is the, for me though, personally, I feel like it's the absolute perfect ratio, simply for the fact that I've tried playing the deck at 40, I've tried playing it at 41, and weirdly enough, I never saw Venus at all. I would never see Venus or and I could barely access it through other means, only for me to get disrupted by hand traps. At 43 and 44, I saw Venus. You know, I saw Venus quite a few times, but, you know, you would still get kind of brick hands in a way. Kinda, not brick, but like, you would still see like not so optimal hands, but at 42 cards, I will damn near open Venus every single game. And if I don't open Venus, I'm opening Brilliant Fusion. And it, it's re it's really good. I love this ratio. I don't know what's so special about 42 cards in a World Chalice deck, but I feel like not only have I done so stupidly good with um, with 42, but the YCS Bokum winner, he was playing 42 cards. So for any of you playing World Chalice, try that. Try putting your deck at 42 cards and watch how beautiful your hands are. Not only just beautiful, but how easy you're able to out your opponent's boards and get... Um, you draw like a perfect ratio of cards going first and second. Almost all the time, so... Let me know what you guys think about this profile. This is Jay Money, and I'm signing up.